Welcome to South Sound Seniors, a program for and about older adults in our community. And I want to wish all of you, first of all, a wonderful, happy month of the Irish. St. Patrick's Day is upon us, of course, the 17th of March. And with a name like Eileen Mackenzie Sullivan, it's one of my favorite holidays to celebrate. In fact, I brought my little Pugsley here and brought his little green outfit. And you probably can't see this, but he actually has a little shamrock collar as well. I don't know if he's Irish, but he dresses like an Irishman at St. Patrick's Day. So hope you have a lovely, wonderful Irish month ahead of you. Next, I want to say a big thank you to all of our friends here at Thurston County Media. The volunteers and staff here are the ones that make it possible for us to come into your home. So a huge wish of gratitude to all of the folks at Thurston County Media. And I think you're going to enjoy our guest tonight who is wearing two hats. And I'm not going to hesitate anymore before I introduce Pat Rasmussen. Welcome, Pat. Thank you. Glad to be here. So you've got two things to talk about. One is your nonprofit, the Edible Forest Garden. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit later, we'll talk about tiny houses, which just fascinate me. <laughs> so welcome. But you started this nonprofit. You are the, f you are the founder, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Called Edible Forest Gardens. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me a little bit about it. How did it get started? Well, about 10 years ago, I came to Olympia to tell people about these food forests or edible forest gardens. And someone wanted us to help put one in and then someone else wanted one and then someone else. And I've just never left. I've been putting them in ever since. Wow. So how many <laughs> gardens do you think you have put in in this area? More than 60. Wow. Getting close to 70 now. That's amazing. Yeah, in private lawns, re replace the lawn with edible forest gardens of fruit trees, nut trees, berry bushes, uh -huh. and perennial vegetables. Wow. So what's a perennial vegetable? Uh, they, like Good King Henry is a, a spinach, a perennial spinach. And it just keeps growing back? Yeah, you just plant them once no. and then they just keep coming back. <gasps> Who knew? I certainly yeah. didn't. Wow. So it's a, yeah, it's a perennial system. Wow. So now do you do the work yourself? How, how does this work? How does your nonprofit work? They're all volunteers. It's done by volunteers. Uh-huh. So you're and kind of evergreen the organizer, interns. the point person. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. So when someone wants to put one in, mm -hmm. I go over and talk to them about what they'd like to have in their garden and mm -hmm. what they like to eat, what kind of fruit and nuts. And then we make a design Mm -hmm. And then we gather cardboard and wood chips and order the plants and get everything organized and put it in on a weekend, on a Saturday, Sunday. Uh huh. So maybe 20 people will come and help put it in and we get it in on a weekend. Wow. So now you mentioned evergreen interns. Mm -hmm. How did that get arranged? How did that all come up? How did you connect with evergreen and... Well, we, we had, you know, I had volunteers and then some of them wanted to be interns so they could get credit. Uh -huh. So I just talked to them at, at Evergreen and uh -huh. get started. And there are certain teachers that work with me more than others. And uh -huh. so the students get credit wonderful. depending on what they need. I bet you've met a lot of wonderful young people over oh, the I years. Oh, I have. They're just fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> They're Isn't enthusiastic. And, and it's good for them to have the experiential learning. Right. So it's one right. thing to read about it in a book and another thing to actually put one it. in. And yeah. so that's why I like to work with volunteers, because if they come on the weekend and learn how to put it in, then they know how to do it. Uh -huh. And they can do it at home they can make or it their do own. it in their neighborhood. or Right. Yeah. yeah. So what's one of the, the bigger projects that you've worked on with your edible forest garden? Well, let's see. Well, Joy Avenue Pathway uh -huh. near the San Francisco Street Bakery uh -huh. with the Northeast Neighborhood Association. Oh, wow. They put in a pathway so kids could ride their bikes to school to Roosevelt. Uh -huh. And then uh, we put in eight fruit trees. And actually, we have 59 different edible plants in there. Wow. Uh -huh. So eight fruit trees and Berry bushes so, so and do you blueberries. Do all the design work then. Mm -hmm. So you're the kind of the key, the design person. Yeah. 
and then you lay it out so that the volunteers can just do the work. Yeah, I put flags in the ground and then they uh -huh. know where to dig the hole to put the plant. And uh huh. <laughs> wow, that must be such a satisfying. It really is. Job. That's why I keep doing it because uh -huh. it's so much fun and it's so interesting because plants are interesting. You never know what they're going to do. And now, how did you get your training in? The, the landscaping and knowing what plants are good in what areas. How did you come to that piece of Well, I've, I've done a lot of work because of being an environmentalist for many years. I've done a lot of restoration work around streams, mm -hmm. planting plants for stream restoration. And, and, um, and so I just learned a lot yeah. doing that, volunteering. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so then how did you kind of get that inspiration to be the founder of this nonprofit to make edible landscape? Well, I first learned about forest gardens in 1994 from someone from Sri Lanka, actually. Oh. And I thought, wow, that's so interesting. But he was putting them all over the world in Ecuador and, you know, Mexico, Costa Rica, places like that. Uh -huh. And but then in um, about 10 years ago, someone that I had known who was a forest activist um, showed me his forest garden. And I said, wow, your forest garden. And I realized that he had developed the right species to do them here in so my bioregion. So I thought, okay. wow, I can do it in my bioregion. So he and I came down here and did a slideshow. Uh -huh. And then we just got started and Oh, and it's so back. fascinating, and, and everyone loves to do it. So right. I just. I bet it's very interesting for you to go back to the gardens that you created 10, 8 years ago and see how they've matured and mm -hmm. what's happened with them. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. What a great way to kind of help save the world one garden at a time. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really neat. Yeah. That's really neat. I was a forest activist around the world, actually. So tell me what a forest activist, um, what did you do as a forest Well, I, from 94 to 98, I was actually the executive director of the Alliance to Save the Russian Taiga Forest. Oh, and so we just uh, did all kinds of work to defend old growth forests. Uh -huh. And then from 98 on, I was the, and still am, but, uh, the coordinator of the World Temperate Rainforest Network. So then I was working on forests and from this bioregion, from Alaska and BC down wow. to Chile and New uh -huh. Zealand and so you're well Tasmania. Traveled. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you. I want to personally thank you for <laughs> helping to save those forests and yeah. for your local work with your nonprofit as well. Thank you. Okay, so happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Pugsley, are you wishing them that too, if you could talk? So we are glad you were able to be with us to learn more about edible forest gardens and about tiny houses and about things going on at Senior Services. Hope you enjoyed the show this month and we'll see you next month.